Good morning everyone and welcome to Rom's Theme Park Vlogs where I'm here today and the Fort Park Theme Park now, can't call it a Fort Park Resort anymore now as they have changed the logo and the naming of the park a little bit, taken away the resort park and introduced us to a brand new logo. It's the opening day here at the park. I have arrived a little bit late due to some traffic this morning but not to worry, still going to make sure I can cover as much as I can in the video for you. Now, to say there's going to be updates in this video would be an understatement as over the winter, Fort Park has been doing a lot, and I mean a lot of work, on their winter sparkle project. There's been loads of updates around the park. Obviously, we know Hyperia has now been completed in terms of the track, so we're going to be definitely going over to that site and having a look at that up close for you. Also, loads of other things around the park as well. We've got a whole new area with Big Easy Boulevard. There's been updates to the Stealth Plaza in terms of new paint going in, new theming ideas and everything like that. Loads, absolutely loads of stuff. I mean, I can't really cover it in just the intro to this video so going to be loads of updates around the park and of course time to get on some rides as well here in the park today the park is open till six o'clock this evening so plenty of time to get on rides and plenty of time to cover all the updates that have been going on for you so do join me along for the adventure here at the opening day of full park So the first update from the Winter Sparkle project is obviously last year Fort Park announced a brand new logo and a new direction for the park. So they're no longer using the Fort Park Resort, it's now just under the name Fort Park and they have got their brand new logo up and also a fresh coat of paint on the entrance portal as well. Looking much much nicer, much fresher compared to what it used to look like. So definitely a move in the right direction. So just as we walk over the bridge to the towards the dome, as you can see, Hyperia in the distance there. And look how much it dominates over the top of Saw the Ride, just to give you an idea of the scale of this coaster. Obviously, coaster's not operating today, obviously not open yet, and we haven't been actually given a sort of official opening day, but they are sort of saying sort of spring, summer this year. So hopefully sort of over the next few weeks, we'll be getting an official sort of opening date and definitely put, be putting that one in our diaries to come back here looks incredible though doesn't it like already just like definitely taking thrills to new heights here at Fulp. also along here as well the improvement works have continued with the painting and upgrading of the entrance pathway over the bridge looks a lot cleaner and a lot fresher definitely already some improvements going on uh, so good to see that again this <laughs> this horizon of Fort Park. Be missing it. So as we're heading down towards Big Easy Boulevard, which is one of the new areas for the park this year, obviously it's replaced Angry Birds Land, a land that had sort of been here for quite a long while, was a bit out of place when it was first put in, I would say, and sort of over the years it's become sort of very outdated and no oh. longer. <laughs> I just got soaked. <laughs> no longer relevant really by today's standard so we'll go around to see Big Easy Boulevard in a second but it's nice to see them sort of updating the areas and also I said like sort of steering away from the IP ones where they are limited to what they can do but we're going to look at the updates as we go around for you and we're starting off down here at Tidal Wave so not actually operating today which I'm not surprised by because it's not the warmest of days but down here at Tidal Wave, obviously the first thing you notice is they've had a brand new exit bridge built. So over the last few years, the exit bridge has kind of been sort of very derelict looking over the years and looking very old and dated. But now they have put this brand new pier in and this has actually completely stripped and rebuilt at the, towards the end of last year and over the winter season. So this is one of the things that they've been doing in their Winter Sparkle project. Another thing that's been done as well is a complete repaint of the actual trough or the waterway of the tidal wave so looking a lot more fresh and a lot more new 
It just looks much nicer in general. There's like, like algae or anything on the bottom like there was before. Wasn't it? it just looks nice to sort of see them actually up. put in some sort of like effort into these areas because this area's been here for a long while, but it hasn't had that sort of treatment for a while. So it's nice to see them sort of looking after some of the older areas of the park. So here's just another shot for you of the area. Looking a lot more fresher. I mean, obviously it's not supposed to look super fresh, so they haven't gone too far into it, but it does look good still. So welcome to Big Easy Boulevard, everyone. Much fresher area now. You can see, like I say, all the Angry Birds stuff is gone. They've done re-theming work over at Detonator, re-themed that to the New Orleans Firework Company now. You've got the Sunset Cinema. You've got the Big Easy Bumpers, Big Easy Bumper Cars. And just a general opening up of this area as well. So you can see it's a lot more open. It's, you know, it just looks a lot nicer. You can see across the park a bit better. Really looking much nicer and fresh, you know. And the good thing about the sort of Sunset Cinema is it's not tied to any individual theme, so they can put loads of different films in there. Currently at the moment, they've got Ready Player One in there at the moment, but they can obviously change that throughout the season. They can change it over the years. If it gets boring and old, they can update it. Very nice indeed. Right then, we're going to start off with a ride on Big Easy Bumpers. This is a re-theme of what used to be the Angry Birds bumper cars. Looking much fresher and newer. Look at that. Fresh. You know, sometimes you can't beat a good old Dodgems ride at a theme park. Very good indeed. I love the way they've done the new theme in all the cars. They look, they look really nice, fitting with the area well. I say, in general, obviously, they've done a lot of work for this area over the winter, sort of in the time they had. And I think we'll definitely see more happening in this area over the next few seasons as well. As Ford have actually announced they are going to be doing more Sparkle Project stuff over the next few seasons as well. So it's not just a, a one off thing, they're going to make this kind of more of a sort of a regular thing that they're going to be doing. Anyway, we've come on down now to the Stealth Plaza. We'll have a look at the updates around there. So the tyre entrance has been completely repainted. New signage has gone up to explain the new speed it goes to, 0 to 80 in 1.8. Looks very nice. <laughs> Typical on the opening day. Stealth has ceased operation for the minute. <laughs> While we're waiting for that to reopen, then we'll have a look around the area and update you on what's happening around. So yeah, as I say, you've got the new signage, new painting, looking very fresh in this area as so well. They've cleaned all the pathways up. Very nice indeed. So yeah, all the station has had a bit of a massive repaint. All the sort of signage has all been re repainted or updated. Control booth has all been updated. It looks a lot fresher down here. I think you're going to hear that a lot today, just how fresh the park actually looks. They've got a new screen right by the entrance as well there, just to update that. No, looking much fresh and much newer down this area. The whole park is so far, to be fair, you know. It's what it's needed. It's what it's needed. Looks good. So we're going to return to the Stealth Plaza a little bit later on for a ride on Stealth. So the ride has gone down for the minute and they are doing some maintenance to it so whilst they're doing that we'll head on down it to it back this morning apparently according to the group chat i'm in so yeah so i so say we missed out that we missed that because we weren't here because of the driven traffic this morning but no we're heading down to different right now we're going to head on down to nemesis inferno and go and ride that no so far the updates looking really good so far there and even rumba has got a paint as well yeah i say everything's just looking a lot fresh around the party all the Everything's been sort of repainted, path, pathways have been cleaned, it's, you know, looking a lot more fresh indeed. So far, so good. So currently advertised as a 40 minute wait for Nemesis Inferno. Let's go ride into the volcano, shall we? So just got off a ride on Nemesis Inferno, waited about 45 minutes for that ride, so not too bad waits for opening day really. And a generally good ride again as always, still running really smoothly, nice bit of intensity as well, so still running good. We are now heading down towards 
Hyperia and in a minute I'm going to show you the area that we can see from the pathway and just show you just how grand scale this new coaster is. So here we are guys, this is the site of Hyperia. The track was completed just about two weeks ago from the date of this video and it looks absolutely incredible. Just look at the scale of it. It's going to be mental when it opens this ride, I can tell you though. Well, you know, this is what Fourth has been long waiting for though. Something of this grand scale to really put it back on the map. And just unbelievable. Look at it, it's huge. You think just like... You think a year ago this site wasn't even anywhere near like this at all? They were, you know, they were, weren't even finished, hadn't even sort of been. Halloween, it was a pile yeah. of mud. They, still, they hadn't really cleared any of the site at all when we were here this time last year. And just in just over a year, they've just like they've done this, they've built this incredible thing. <laughs> Things will be amazing when it opens, you know, can't wait. I mean, look at that first drop. That's going to be unique to say the least. Definitely going to have to come back here and go on this when it opens. So you've got the outbank to turn there, which comes out of the station, up onto the lift hill. So there's still quite a lot of work to be done on the site at the moment, as you can see. It's still obviously there's not really any sort of like theming around the area in yet. They've still obviously got to test the actual ride. The ride has actually had, hasn't actually been testing yet. So you know, at the moment, there's still a lot of work to do. But I think we're probably going to see a probably sort of late May, maybe June opening on this at the moment. So as you know, it's still quite a bit of work to be done on the site but looks impressive though elsewhere down this section of the park another thing that was announced during just a few weeks ago before opening was obviously the closure of black mirror labyrinth so as you see all the signs have been taken down and the area is once again sort of empty really well apart from obviously slammer that is still sitting on site now, yeah, it's really interesting to see what they're going to do with this area. I mean, obviously before it was used as a scare maze, and I think we'll probably see it returning as a scare maze this year, probably. But again, like you know, Black Mirror Labyrinth only really lasted. I think it was only I think it was only what a year, maybe two. It didn't last that long, and I think it, again it's an example of hopefully them steering away from IP attractions because obviously, as we know, the sort of IP attractions are all well and good and stuff, but you're very limited to what you can do with them. So it's good to see them sort of hopefully steering away from from those attractions and sort of doing a bit more originality, which I'd like to see really, because you know they can do a really good job when they do original stuff. So still down for maintenance at the moment and also receiving its repaint is Samurai. So over the winter season this has been receiving a repaint and a lot of work being done to it. As you can see it's still quite heavily in that at the moment so Probably not going to see that opening anytime soon yet, but still, it's good to have these flat rides here. Even though I don't ride this one in particular, having the flat rides at the park does make a difference. I, know well, you. I, haven't, I haven't been on it for a while, but I, I can go on it. I don't care. So. Yeah, the good thing about the flat rides being on the park is it does sort of separate the queues out a little bit, makes them bigger roller coaster rides. It's not my favourite, less, less busy. Oh, well, for sure. So Colossus has obviously over winter received quite a bit of TLC to it, a bit of maintenance work, had this whole entire front entrance sign repainted and a lot of the track was repainted they said but actually looking at it, you know, down this end here hasn't quite been done yet, but certain bits have. So it is looking a bit fresher. One thing I will say though is it looks like a lot of the bits that have sort of been repainted, the paint has already sort of started to come off a bit so I don't know whether a second coat might have been needed and stuff, but like it looks like the where the train's been running around, it has stripped a lot of the paint off. However, all the posts and stuff around here and the fencing has started to have repaint work. But this is the main section where they did do a lot of the repainting work. And as I say, looking at it from my perspective, it looks like a lake. A lot of the paint work has started to come off on the running rails a lot. This bit looks fresh and new though, the zero G stuff. But I say. This is only a start project really, like the actual repainting of the ride has only just been sort of like started so maybe they haven't done it all over winter yet. There's certain sections they have done, so you can see like down here they've done this section, down into the underway and over the Cobra Roll they've done a lot of paint work, but maybe the rest of the track still needs doing yet. Work is ongoing though, it's good to see them stay ongoing with work. 
So this looks all fresh down here. So this bit has been one of the main bits that has been been redone. Obviously, it's quite a big ride to do a repaint job on, and obviously they need to make sure they're doing maintenance on the actual ride at the same time. Hard to do, but it is a start. So at the moment down here by Rush, it's only running one side at the moment. Now this morning, it was running two sides, I think, this morning, but they've only reduced it down to one now, which has put the wait time right up on the ride. It's now currently a 50 minute queue time. It's quite long for that ride, to be fair. Bearing in mind the ride cycle only lasts for about a minute. That's 50 rides you've got to wait for there. I might go and point them. <laughs> but again, at the same time, though, it has received a nice bit of repainting, so it's looking fresh and new. Lots of, say, lots of repainting work has been going on down the park, and it does, it does show. Just doing a little bit of lick of paint here and there can make the difference. <laughs> so just why L takes a ride on Quantum, let's talk a little bit more about this sort of sparkle project that Thorpe had been doing over the winter and sort of what areas they had covered. So obviously Hyperia was its own project anyway, so that didn't come under the sort of sparkle project as such. But generally around the park, the sparkle project has been a lot of it has been repainting the current attractions that they've got here, tidying up the areas and repairing bits of the park that needed major repair work. So as you've already seen in this video so far, we've talked about obviously the new bridge that's been built over at Tidal Wave, the repainting of rides such as Rush, even Quantum has received a little bit of work here and there, and also over at Vortex as well. Looks like Colossus's track has been half repainted at the moment. I said you saw from my little snaps just about them that it hasn't fully been done yet and obviously bits that they did do haven't been fully done so obviously they're still continuing work on that and obviously that's going to continue probably into the next sparkle project as well but in general though it's really nice to see them actually doing this kind of work in the park i mean it's something that Fulp has needed for quite a long while is a bit of a sort of spruce up around the areas you know some of the areas were looking tired some of them were looking a little bit sort of run down and even just doing a lick of paint does make the difference really you know it really makes these rides stand out as they should because they shouldn't look faded and old and even if they are meant to look faded and old there's theming faded and old and then there's just faded and old and you obviously you've got to make that fine balance between making it look like it's meant to be there and just leaving it to basically go go to pot basically but no it is nice to see them doing these updates around the park and I say you know obviously they have said that they're going to continue this sparkle project on through the season and into the next season as well so you know they've got a lot of plans for the park going on loads of stuff going on here so far today as well you know there's there's a lot in this video to cover full park weather update <laughs> everyone's come in because it's absolutely chucking it down <laughs> it was not this busy took five minutes ago rain torrential outside of one well forget tidal wave <laughs> I mean, more like rain wave. Oh, so can I just point out, tidal wave is closed due to the weather. How does that work? <laughs> a ride you get wet on and it closes in the rain. That's good, that is. That's, that's Britain, that is. I don't want to be on that though. It's, it's yeah, quite cold. You forget that. It's, uh, probably about eight degrees now. It's just dropped down a bit. Right. Let's go and find a ride that's not closed due to the weather. <laughs> right, now that the rain has stopped and the rides have finally reopened, we're now in the queue for Colossus. Time to ride on the power of 10. <laughs> well, I've got to say, I've had better rides on Colossus, in my opinion. Waited about a good hour and a half for that ride because dispatching has been really slow on this ride today, and the ride broke down a few times as well, so that didn't help. And then just to top it all off, <laughs> not only did we have a really rough ride on that that time, but also it, it was raining as well, so that made it even worse. I know Thorpe have been saying that they don't want to replace the trains on this ride. I mean, I know they're repainting it and they're going to retrack it and stuff like that. That's all in the plans. But I think new trains in a few years' time are going to have to be on the cards because the trains are really uncomfortable now. Like, it's a struggle to get into them. There's a lot of head banging on the ride. And if you, you know, if you're not used to it and you don't know how to ride it, it's, it's a, it can really hurt actually. But, you know, I mean, I'd like to try and say it's, it's still a good ride to have here. The, the nostalgia of it being here is great, but I think it is the next ride here that needs some investment in it. You know, it's, 
I know they I said I know they painted it and stuff like that, they've done all that work on it. But retracking and new cars I think is what's really really needed for it. No, a bit uncomfortable that was that time, I will I will say that. I think we're gonna go and try and find an indoor ride because it keeps raining here. And I say we had hailstones on that ride that time, so that was even more uncomfortable. <laughs> Not great. Nah, I'm crazy. <laughs> it's really cold now. Yeah, wow. it's a bit it's a bit chilly today on park here. So we just come out of the sunset cinema where we've just seen the Ready Player One film that they've got in there at the moment. If you've seen the film, it's kind of it's based on the film and has like snippets from it. Um, obviously it uses the 4D effects that used to be in there when it was Angry Birds Land. They've used the existing effects quite well, so the seats like still move, there's still like wind effects, still smoke effects and stuff like that in there, but I still personally think they could enhance it more. I think there could have been more like lighting effects in there that they really just have the basic LED lights on the side that they had before. It doesn't really add anything to it as much and I think they could have had more like added some like subs to like the actual thing because it wasn't really much base in there like when you've got like cars crashing and rolling around and stuff if you need some subs for that really and i think so i mean the film's very good and the sort of use of the effects that are in there pretty well done but i think they can still add more to it and make it a little bit better than what it is but obviously it is sort of early days and obviously they have converted this whole area sort of quite quickly over the winter season so obviously i think there is more to come to the, to the cinema itself hopefully we'll see some more effects a bit more lighting in there a couple of more like bit sound a bit better in there you know but not bad for a start not bad for a start it's get you know it's not all going to happen overnight as we know so let's see what they do with it in the future but as i said sort of at the start of this vlog the whole idea of having the sunset cinema is that they can sort of adapt the different films and then they can change it up swap it around it's a much more adaptable concept but no wasn't too bad though apart from that right I think we're going to head over now and do Ghost Train next, see if they made any improvements to the Ghost Train since last season. So just came out of Ghost Train. No real changes to Ghost Train since last season. Obviously not the storyline, still the same. The actual ride itself is still the same as well. And that's kind of a bit of a shame to see, really, to be fair, because I think although the storyline's really, really good and the way the actors are really good in there, I think the problem is they tried to rely on making it scary based on actors alone. And I've said the always the good things about doing like a really really good scare attraction are not just to rely on actors to make you scared, but adding other things as well. Add you know, adding sound effects, adding lighting effects and stuff. And the, some of the stuff in there is okay, but there's not really any sort of scary moments in there. I don't think. I mean, I know I've done it a few times now, but even so, there is ways that you can make it better. I think. You know, I hope to see more stuff added to it really don't get me wrong it's a really good attraction if you haven't done it before i recommend doing it but it's just one of them rides that's not really a scary ride there's nothing that really makes it any jump scary in there you know but it's nice to get back on it again but i hope to sort of see a bit more to it in the coming years to be fair not bad though not bad still actually wasn't as long a wait as normal on that one so actually you know it's nice yeah, to not wait as long cold. for it. <laughs> right, we've got time for probably one more ride here on park today. We're going to go over to Stealth Plaza oh, yeah, and try I'm and get a ride on Stealth out. before the day is out. Overall, it's been quite a bit of a sort of eventful opening day for, for Falk. Obviously, we've managed to see quite a lot of the updates and stuff, and they've been really good. Operations-wise today, it has been a little bit on and off, really, to be fair. A lot of rides have been down, and I say, the weather hasn't helped that, but also in general, sort of ride operation hasn't exactly been the smoothest either. I think we you know we've waited a lot for rides, and it has been a little bit shaky here today. Right, we're back down itself. Advertiser's 35 minute wait. Let's hope it doesn't go down again. <laughs> we were here earlier and it went down, so we're gonna try again. Last ride of the day. So we've just done our last ride of the day, we took a ride on stealth after it being down multiple times throughout the day, finally got a ride on it. So let's have a little bit of a review of the opening day here at Fall. As sort of said in the sort of throughout the video today, 
the theming and the sort of sparkle project stuff has been really good. I must admit the park is looking a lot cleaner, looking a lot fresher, areas are looking tidier and better, and even rides are looking a little bit tidier. However, ride availability today has been very sort of on and off. Now obviously, with the rain and stuff that we had a bit earlier, it doesn't help at all. You know, that doesn't help at all, that doesn't, so obviously, I won't blame all the ride closures and stuff today purely on the fact that they weren't ready to open as the poor weather doesn't help. But in general, sort of operations of the rides has been a bit slow today. So in general, like I said, when I went on Colossus earlier, dispatching was very slow on that, making the queue longer. And then also in general, just around the park, I just don't think they've had quite the operations that they would normally have. But Obviously it is the opening day, so sometimes you sort of can sort of be like, well, you know, after winter maintenance we might have had a few problems and stuff. But yeah, it's been okay, but it's not it can be better, I think. And obviously, when you know your opening day is gonna be busy, it does mean that if the ride operations aren't quite there, you don't get on all the attractions. Like today, for example, we've not been on Saw the Ride, we've not been on the Swarm today, we've not been on Walking Dead. Quite a few major rides have missed out on, either because we've had to wait really long roughly, in, in, in queues for rides, or rides have just been down and you haven't been able to go on them. I say, even on opening day today, like Rush was only running one side today. I haven't seen it run only one side for a good few years, so you know, strange that that was a problem today. But no, in general, you know, hopefully these little problems become sort of less and less throughout the season, and we do have a really great season coming up because I think so far with what they've done with the improvements. It is in the right direction and hope to see more of it happening over the season as well. So that's sort of the end of uh, Rob Seenbart vlogs for this weekend. It's been a busy weekend in general. We went to Chesington yesterday and that was busy. A nice day there though as well. And then obviously today we've been here at Fulp. So been a really, really busy opening weekend of theme parks. It's been good to get back to the theme parks in general. Obviously we do miss them over the winter here in the UK because they aren't open all year round unfortunately and that's another thing I would love to see them do later on in time is a bit more sort of winter opening if they can do but hope you enjoyed the vlogs over the weekend hope you've enjoyed getting back to theme parks if you have been back to them yourselves and we're looking forward to a really really good season here across the UK theme parks from Rob's theme park vlogs I will see you next time take care of yourselves